Then here we go again. Looks like I've got some uh, blackberries, raspberries coming in there. I thought those originally were, those plants were, was poison ivy. So, and here's my trellis I built this past week for grapes. I guess eventually I'll uh, turn that, in. I might turn that into a pergola if I have some more room. I'm starting to run out of space. There's the bird feeder area, which is a very popular spot among our feathered friends. As you can see, as we enter into a slow-mo mode, that uh, these Rose of Sharon bushes along the side are way overgrown, along with various weeds and what have you. So i got to cut those back at some point, but it's not on the priority list. I don't know if you heard that, but my cat is walking back and forth on my desk for some reason. Though he has plenty of food and treats and all that sort of thing, so I don't know. He's just being weird. I uh, might as well just you know, jump right into the rant part while we're closing in on some of the other overgrowth here you know well first of all there's a lot of clover you could see all the little white little flowers but one thing that the, it's absent this year are honeybees i haven't seen any honeybees i mean literally i haven't seen a single honeybee now there's been a lot of demolitions in the area of old buildings and i'm just wondering and i, I just just a guess here's my apple tree that uh you know, in an area like mine, there's probably not an awful lot of beehives, honey beehives. And I know there's no beekeepers here because it's more or less on the outskirts of town. It's not truly a, you know, farming area. And I'm worried that uh, I don't have any honeybees this year, which could present a problem with pollination. Some wildflowers growing along the fence starting to pop up. Those things won't be in full bloom until literally August sometime. So, uh, and, and there's another Rose of Sharon in there. Eventually I wanted that fence which faces a drive-through between my house and a doctor's office. Um, and I wanted to just build those Rose of Sharon things up as a hedge just to give more privacy. We'll see what happens on the right hand side next to the to the right of that red flower. That's all wild mint. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, you know, it's been about six months now since we first learned about this insanity that is stricken, you know, the world or particularly this country and it's been about i don't know less than four months since this so-called lockdown or whatever you want to call it there's a close-up of the apple tree it's a little bit of some unhealthy leaves on there i'm not sure what's going on there but the bark and looks pretty pretty good I think that that might be left over from when we had that cold snap where it got down into the 20s and some of those leaves might just be had been damaged then. I hope that's all that is. Though I'm not expecting apples this year. I I figure this would be the third year since I planted this from a seed. So I think it's the fourth year you'll should yield apples. I forgot to take the camera back in this crazy open stretch of wild mint but back in there I discovered uh, a wild strawberry patch I mean I, to call it a patch is a, is a stretch it's just uh, a little area kind of buried in there and again I think the birds will probably get get all of what's in there but I'm hoping to work of that area so that next year that area actually can become 
they strong they try to pull back some of this wild mint I really don't use it that much at all I put in a few more tomato plants right here in this little area right at the bottom of the screen since I I was growing some in my little mini greenhouse and I gave a bunch to the nurses over at that doctor's office next to my house just because uh, that I would have had I don't know I have no more room really to plant them it's one of my squash plants coming into view no flower on it yet uh, though it's you know it's growing fairly the size it should be at this point in time and just some a little lettuce plant there that I just threw in because I had some space and I figured by the time that squash plant gets big I'll the lettuce will be bolted and of course these are carrots which I have to thin out I thinned out a bunch of my from my other carrot patch and I got some nice red and white and of course orange carrots out of there so I have to do the same here I mean at this point they're like baby carrots I just had a salad literally about a half hour ago from which was lettuce kale shard and carrots uh, some uh, radishes and peas from uh, from my garden it was just basically was great some more tomato plants that I threw in here too originally I had um, I think I might have had some radishes in that spot too and then once they were done I just put in a tomato plant there and over here I've got some more radishes planted and some beets and I'm hoping that you know then there's another little lettuce plant there but this late in the season and it's been hot it's been in the 80s and uh, that I'll just that lettuce is probably not going to get too much further and hopefully these radishes within the next week I'll be able to harvest those and of course the stinging nettle plant which I after I shot this I shot this as I first came into the backyard and then afterwards I had trim down that stinging nettle plant this is another little trellis I put up for these grapes why well, want my grapevine the other the bigger area the one that's growing up the side of the house which I actually should have shown but I did not um, the birds already got to those before the grapes even were formed like just as the grapes as the basis of the grapes were coming on the birds figured it out and they gnawed away at it so that's one of the reasons it motivated me to put these little trellis things up and like I say I'm gonna try to make some kind of pergola thing that I can put some train I'm trying to tra as you can see I've got ropes here to train the uh, grapes onto this and and then put some kind of bird netting uh, to protect at least this area and let them go after the wild stuff that I'm letting grow up the house. You can see I just, you know, shape this wood. It's two by four. You can see even I left the, I haven't stained this yet. Um, it still has the printing on it from the lumber yard. But I'll stain that and I'll sand that area where, it, where the writing is and I'll stain it the same color as some of the other stuff. Anyway, that's that. But yeah, back to this madness. So, you know, it's really, you know, I, I really don't want to go anywhere, you know, having to wear a mask. It's annoying. It's uncomfortable. I think the social distancing or social isolation is preposterous absurd meaningless as i've said before because you end up going into the next person's airspace anyway and since a mask doesn't protect you from someone else it basically is just a sneeze guard um it just takes 
I don't know. I have much more fun here. It's my kale plant, which I take a couple leaves off a day. It only those leaves are fairly big, so you take one or two kale leaves off, a couple of shard leaves, and then a handful of lettuce, and you've got a salad. There's some kind of bee or I don't know, is that two flies together or something weird like that? I don't know. And behind this I have a couple of more uh, I have a zucchini plant that actually has flowers has flowered and I'm hoping that some sort of insect will pollinate that go from the male to the female. Now I did see a small like what you would call a bumblebee uh, today just one it was over by the cucumbers which we'll get to in a little while so I'm hoping that's a sign of things to come and occasionally a butterfly or so I've, I've noticed in the yard which you know they're they they're pollinators as well a more that's like a, this is so overgrown it's create crazy that's a tomato plant in the upper right and then you can see all this this is all cilantro that's bolted next to this crazy patch of sage and then all look at all look how wild this uh, parsley has grown behind that is some uh, basil and there's some thyme growing down in the in the far corner but you can see everything's just exploded. We've had a couple of afternoon thunderstorms type of things and you know and that's it. That's all it took and everything just took off. It's insane. The oregano is still growing like like a bush. I have two basically giant bushes of oregano. And parsley seeds must have been spread all over the place cuz that's just popping up everywhere. There's the cat. But, you know, I don't know. I, you know, I've, this despicable term, new normal, you know, gets thrown around. And then all the craziness that's going on in the streets. It's, uh, you know, it doesn't seem like there's any end in sight to it. I mean, I, I don't really know what to think anymore. I, I, you know, it seems, appears to be politically motivated. Um, you know, it's it's very disruptive, and all people like me can hope for is that whatever the ultimate outcome is, whether this country goes communist, I mean, America is kind of the only country left, you know, that's really been holding back the communists. Uh, you know, if you, I mean, basically, the, if you look at China, the expansion of China, the Chinese economy, and the uh, fact that they've got a bit 1.3 billion people, there's a, you know, there's been some squabbles between them and India, but, uh, which also has a billion people. But, you know, this, if this country goes, you know, goes the way of the radical left, uh, it's not going to be pretty for, uh, and, and it'll change pretty fast. I mean, look how fast things changed here. Literally, like I said, six months ago, nobody even knew about any of this stuff. And now suddenly the entire country's changed. Everything's crazy. Cities are burning. People can't talk to one another, you know. And and it's the year 2020 with all this, or with all this advance. These are all, this is my other, I thinned out some of these carrots and you because see, see I have some corn growing in there and those are sunflower seeds but you know in the year 2020 and with the technology we have the capabilities we have we could have clearly protected the elderly and the sick uh, without having to restrict free flow of, of human beings the rest of us uh, throughout society Buried underneath these, these are potato plants, and they kind of just got, I don't know, I never had them grow this wild. And underneath them you can see is lettuce. It's all lettuce under there. 
and I just basically, you know, just been picking leaves off of this lettuce. And then these are my crazy, insane cucumber plants, which are, which was troubling me because there must be literally 50 flowers on these cucumber plants, and they're still open. They've been open for several days, meaning that they're there to be pollinated and nothing's happening because of this lack of bees. I have one little tiny cucumber that looks like a pencil or something on the other side that has, you know, must have gotten pollinated somehow randomly by something. But otherwise, yeah, as you, you know, you could see all this lettuce. This stuff won't last much longer in this kind of heat though probably the shade of the cucumbers and the potato plants uh, flower, uh, leaves have helped this survive this long. I mean, we're talking right now, as of now, it's the end of June, June 28th, and it's like 80 degrees and going to be in the 80s for the next week or something. So we've got a little heat wave going on. So lettuce just doesn't really like that. There was a ladybug there, I noticed. See if we get a glim glimpse. There it is. A glimpse of that. But yeah, that's my uh, my rant uh, for the day. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it other than, you know, I'm glad I have my my yard. I had this big picture window in the front, which I basically crap painted a two by four foot piece of plywood, um, particle board actually, painted it solid and I put it over the middle of the window so at the top of the window and the bottom of the window is open for light and it actually looks like it's an intentional thing. But the reason I really did it is so someone driving by, you know, doesn't throw a rock or a brick and smash my front window. I've got cameras uh, around my house. I've got motion detectors and alarms and things like that and um, you know you what do you say what is that expression you know prepare for, hope for the best prepare for the worst. Here's like I was talking just look at all these flowers every one of these flowers has the potential to be a cucumber but they're just waiting to be pollinated. Look at look at them all in there insane it's really insane and if you see on the far right here if you can see it it's this tiny little cucumber it actually looks bigger in this video than it is in real life because in real life it's with the width of a pencil so for all the lushness of the garden this year and certainly I've it, this is a very successful year for me Everything has grown very well and has really grown crazy. But look at all those flowers. Uh, without pollinators, without the bees, you know, it's not uh, it's not going to be a good year. But we'll, I'm I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful. And you know, having all these these colorful flowers around should be attracting pollinators. And I have flowers this year that I planted near these beds to also attract pollinators. So it's not as if for the lack of trying that that they're not coming. I just They just don't seem to be here. And it's like I was looking, it's almost like Mother Nature herself with putting out all of, way more of the clover this year than ever before. In fact, the ground almost looks like there's snow on it. It's as if the planet itself is saying, here, bees, come here, come here, you know, but uh, I don't know, this could be a problem. So anyway, good luck to everybody during this pandemic and, you know, rioting on the streets. Uh, I hope you can do what I do, and that is enjoy your own backyard. That's my water collection one of my water collection jugs there. See, there's my signs. That goes into, I have a little, that's my 
workshop, little bar, man cave, my lounge chair where I get my son every day, and of course the mini greenhouse here where I grow my seedlings. That's a sol I've got a solar fan in there to try to reduce the temperature. It helps keep it, it used to get up to about 100 degrees or more in there. This bigger fan that I installed with a larger solar panel keeps it to about 90. But, you know, anyone who's got, who's done, has had greenhouses understands the, how they heat up. It's, it's just insane. And you can see all that wild oregano on the, to the left of this. And I've, inside of this thing now, I really don't have anything. I'm going to try drying using this greenhouse to dry like oregano and parsley and see if I could just make some dried spices out of the things I grow. The only thing in there right now is another tomato plant and this thing in the foreground through the plastic is some what they call cat grass. Feed the cats. It's like catnip for them. So anyway, that's pretty much it. I've got wildflowers growing in here amidst these wild onions. There's my some more shard and peas in the back. And of course I've got uh, a slew of pepper plants and tomatoes right in this area, which the camera should start speeding up now because it's the end, getting to the end of the end of the movie. So as usual, thanks for watching. Visit my website, rockflux.com. Grab a shirt. Listen to some of my music on YouTube, my beat poetry tracks. And there's some books available as well if you're interested in that kind of thing. Otherwise, you know, like I said, all the best in dealing with all this stuff. Some of us don't really care too much about it because I've got a life outside of it. There we go. I think we'll take a quick look at one of my banana peppers down here. Um, my work glove. Where is it? There it is. And tomatoes over here which are out of control. I trimmed those down a little bit today too after this video. So until next time all the best. Take care. There's my pond. Have a great 4th of July weekend coming up next week.